Well, we're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll look at the education sector and the unions. The federal government is set to release the sum of 1.18 billion naira for pivoting autonomy of universities. The sum also covers re renegotiation of the 2010 agreement between the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities and other allied associations and senior staff association of Nigerian Polytechnics, though the government did not give a breakdown of how it planned to disburse and distribute the amount among the unions, uh, the amount set aside to the autonomy of universities has been described as very important. Now, to note that the amount was listed as new project in the approved 2023 budget for tertiary institution in the country. The tertiary institution in Nigeria have been bedeviled by union activities, poor infrastructure and poor welfare of workers and poor funding, among others. Meanwhile, the unions have reacted differently to the move by the government saying it's not in line with the provisions of negotiation, among others. Joining us this morning to make sense of all of this, Ulu Dare Akinlaja, founder of the Yada University and also CEO Ulu Dare Akinlaja Research and Development Company, right here in Lagos. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. I I'd like to ask you, uh, what are your thoughts about this move by the federal government? Do you think this is going to help in solving the agitation between the federal government and the unions? Um, uh, so, <laughs> I don't think it's going to do a lot. And, and that's because uh, um, there's so much in that agreement and the federal government just seems to be uh, playing it, uh, what's the word now? Just trying to use trickles uh, to get the association quiet, okay? Um, as we can see here, it's autonomy. There's a lot uh, that the federal government needs to still do, okay, to grant these universities full autonomy. 1.18 billion. Is this for financing the universities? Is it for paying staff salaries? Is it for making universities independent of state financing? What exactly is it for? Okay, and whatever it is for, 1.18 billion cannot even begin to scratch <laughs> the surface of the needs of the universities. So I, I, I just think the federal government is being smart by half if there's a word like that, uh, and maybe appease uh, the growing tension or the growing uh, uh, anger and resentment uh, uh, coming from the union. Uh, I, I don't think this will do a lot. If indeed it is for university autonomy, then I don't think it will do a lot. Because I'm, I'm answering this question based on the word university autonomy. I don't think it's going to do a lot to grant that autonomy. All right, you, you, you rightly said this has been uh, put as um, <laughs> as a project um, in the approved 2023 budget um, yeah. for tertiary institutions in the country. W what does the government mean uh, by pivoting autonomy or when they say uh, they want to pivot autonomy, uh, the autonomy of universities? Um, what does that mean? Okay, so... Um they are actually using a language which is not strange. What they're trying to say is autonomy is being broken down into phases because uh, the university autonomy or the autonomy that universities need is, is not just um, one-off in some cases. Uh, universities are asking for autonomy financially. Uh, that means uh, uh, looking for ways where they can uh, um, um, run their system themselves and be free of state funding. Another kind of autonomy is universities being able to recruit students into their universities. That's one form of autonomy. Another form of autonomy is universities being able to employ staffs, teachers, and be able to pay them. Another form of autonomy is being able to control their curriculum, what they teach, how they teach it. Okay, so when I when, when you use the word pivoting, it simply means uh, they want to kickstart the phase to grant full autonomy to universities. So they are not wrong in using that word. My challenge is what exactly are they pivoting with? Okay, are they pivoting with allowing universities employ, allowing universities fund themselves? What exactly are they pivoting with? What phase of that autonomy are they pivoting with? 
Well, by responding to, you know, this move by the government, uh, yeah. the unions have also reacted. They have uh, raised some questions as well, asking that you have also raised. But one of such is that they are saying that this is not in line with collective bargaining procedures. And as such, mm -hmm. that they, they don't think that is valid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so collective bargaining, so if you remember, like you just rightly said, uh, the union had is the kind of idea, if there's a word like that, uh, with, the, with the government about how they expect this to go, okay, what, what they expect to happen. So that collective bargaining is what they are speaking to. They are saying there are certain things we asked for. There are certain things we demand, okay? Uh, don't start from where you think is comfortable for you. Uh, you are, so start with what we have asked for. Okay, uh, give us uh, autonomy from this point. Allow us able to recruit. Allow us able be able to benchmark salaries for our staffs. Allow us able we should be able to pay. We should be able to fund risk. You know, so there, there was an agreement. I'm sure that's what the union is speaking to. That agreement must be followed based on uh, what was written to the federal government. I'm sure the federal government is just uh, picking a spot or a point in that agreement, or maybe where a point that's comfortable for them. Uh, where they can uh, still hold the, uh, well, I say the carrot and the stick, or still hold the string and still determine what. And I'm sure the union is not having that. They want the federal government to follow through on uh, the need, uh, on the requirements of that agreement they had with the federal government. And the agreements with the federal government, they have that agreement. And, and I think they should look for ways where they can afford that agreement, even if they break it down into phases, if they uh, look for a point on the phase where they can base on, but they must follow through on the agreement that was made. But, but let's let's speak to you know the issue of uh, autonomy for universities now yes. do you think that uh, you know varsity autonomy is a solution to end all of the strike and all of the infrastructural issues in our universities yes and, and I've, I've been asked this at different for us you must understand that um, most of the things we follow today was created by the military government as far back as 1977, for instance, where we only had 12 universities, okay? So most of this control, uh, uh, what happens in universities, determining what is taught, was created by a military government to some extent, okay? Uh, and, and what this does is that universities cannot really move at the pace of research and development going around the world like we see today because they still rely on state for funds. They still rely on state to determine certain things. So if I uh, give you money to run your system, I obviously can tell you what to teach. I can tell you how far your curriculum can go. I can tell you uh, what, what you need to put in that curriculum, how you need to teach it. I can even tell you the kind of students you must admit <laughs> into your university. Okay, so autonomy, people must look at it. Autonomy is not, does not just speak to uh, maybe they can make money for themselves and don't require government money, like in that statement. It also speaks to curriculum, what they can teach, how they can teach. It also speaks to who they can employ, what grade of, uh, of lectures or faculty they can employ, how they can attract quality talents to their universities, what kind of people can they admit into their universities. So autonomy is not just about infrastructure or universities being able to make money for themselves. That's the full chain of what true autonomy means. All right. We heard that the federal government, uh, before we even go to that, um, uh, yeah. just want to quote some, some uh, words from one of the officials from the universities um, who is saying that, um, quote, this is a chairperson of ASU, the Academic Staff Union of Universities at the Federal University of Technology, MENA, uh, Professor Bola Bolari. Uh, he's quoted by the puncher saying, quote, they, that's the federal government, they don't understand what they are talking about. They need to come outside and explain what the money is for. They want to pivot autonomy for universities. How? He's asking. They need to come out and explain what is going on so Nigerians will be aware of the whole process. So it's clear that, as you were saying, even... Uh, the, the academics themselves are already complaining. They do not know what is going on. They don't understand what, what this means. Yeah, because, because if <laughs> they're raising money for pivoting, pivoting what? At what phase? At what level? What are you pivoting? Are you pivoting infrastructure? Are you pivoting their salaries? Are you pivoting their ability to develop curriculum? At what point? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> but um, but um, um, what are your thoughts on, on, on the... I mean, two weeks ago, we there were reports that... Uh, uh, federal government was to begin payment of salary arrears for 
members of CONRA, the Congress of University, Nigerian University Academics, which is um, a parallel body, you want to call it that, or the second um, um, yeah. uh, labor union for, for university academics in the country. What are your thoughts on that? Even though CONRA has come out to plead with the federal government to also consider their colleagues in ASU, uh, ASU and SANU are kicking against it. What do you think about that, uh, that move? If it, if it materializes. So, most of these conversations is just the complexity that comes with union management and uh, negotiation and conflict management. Okay. First of all, this union you just mentioned was seemingly just given a certificate to to function. Um, I don't know why, maybe to checkmate the, the other union. Okay. Or, you know, but they are all lecturers of our universities. Whether they are Konoa, whether they are Asu, they all lecture in our universities. They are all an important part of our educational system. And you see, this unionism concept, um, I, whether we see its advantages or its disadvantages, is causing a lot of harm to our education. Um, I, I, I listened to a very, very uh, uh, interesting interview the other day where the man was saying, I, I, I think education should be moved to our exclusive list. <laughs> where, <laughs> yeah. yes, where striking itself can be a crime. Or not even funding uh, education can be a crime. We need to move it to that level. Okay, so even though it's, it's our educational system, these people have families, they teach in our schools, they lecture our students, okay? I'm not completely absorbing certain things because I, I believe that in conflict management, it's always important to have different shifts, okay? But the federal government are the designers of the system, they're the one who hold the, 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 the carrot, they're the one who hold the stick, they're the ones who hold the lines, they're the ones who, so that's why it seems like we're giving all the, not blames, but it looks like we're talking to them directly because they're the ones that hold the strings of some sort. Okay, they can, the House, the Senate, the House of Reps, they need to start to look at our educational system. What's in the bill that needs to be adjusted? Okay, because we just talk about salaries of well, these well, people. Well, well, well the yeah. House of Reps, they, they did their, their bit, which is to get us to the call of the strike. But you but, know what they say? They say the rest is history. So <laughs> let's not go no, into No, because, that. because okay. the House of Reps can tell us the strike. We need to yeah. go now. Uh, we, okay. we need to go. Fingers crossed. Uh, let's see how all of this pans out. Uh, yeah. Whether or not, but it's quite interesting conversation and great insight you've brought this morning on, you know, the show. We do appreciate your time so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, all right. So we've been speaking with Olu Dari Akinlaja. He's the founder of Yadavasti, uh, CEO OR and the company right here in Lagos. Uh, thank you so much. I hope I got that correctly. Uh, Kofi? Yeah, wh wh whilst we're trying to understand what it means, Kofi, what it Because you asked me about, about six times. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, know, you know, it you wasn't know. even that. I mean, it, because if you go back to looking at the dictionary meaning of this word yeah, or, yeah, you know, some you kind know, of it's, meaning, it's, it's not very, you know, uh, very explicit. From, from place, you know, no, so it feels like yeah, a semantic. Yes, but, but, but whilst yeah, trying, we're trying to understand it, you know, students are leaving the country in droves. So to, to look for to look for education in other countries, even if they can get in the Republic, they'll go. Uh, know, apart from Sudan leaving the country, it feels like almost every other person is you leaving know, the country. You know, where, where you I, I won't be surprprised one morning and I wake up and you'll probably be telling me that, hey, you know, you girl, know, how much you know. You know, when you were reading, you were reading the um, story on, on um, National Social Radio, it wasn't like the same. Um, uh, doctors are leaving. I was saying, hey, you should add journalists are also leaving as well. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen. Oh, we, are journalists we're, leaving? We're a marginalized group. <laughs> you know, we, we don't report are, on ourselves. Are journalists leaving? Journalists need to start reporting on themselves. But uh, are journalists means, really leaving? Because well, I haven't they, seen. Well, you will be, we'll be shocked that journalists okay. are leaving. Okay. <laughs> but let's also not forget <laughs> that in February uh, there's we're, also we're, a we're plan. An, an impacted, impacted group. Uh, we would we'll, we'll have a com we we'll have a conversation <laughs> about that. Uh, we're being told to move. Uh, right down. That's for the want of time. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We will definitely return tomorrow with more interesting uh, lineup, and we hope that you join us tomorrow. But in the meantime, we'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it would be great to follow us on uh, our social media platforms. Absolutely. Yeah, Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We're also on Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube. My name is Kofi Bartel, so continue our conversation with uh, a cup of coffee off the set, but you have yourself a great I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic morning. <laughs>